hello everyone and welcome to the Hour Talk Show PS4 edition for season 14. Yes, we're finally back after quite a big absence, but um, <laughs> we're here at the start of season 14 to bring you all the driver lineups, the calendar and a, a short preview of uh, the first round in Australia. But before that, I'd like to introduce you my co-commentator for today it is jake racing yep hello everyone uh glad to be here on the aor talk show and uh hoping for a very good season um the grid is looking great the calendar is looking great so uh quite excited for it yeah indeed and um uh, once again it's one it's one of the longest um calendars that we have similar to the uh, obviously the real life one and the real life one from today 2012 starting in australia october 1st so basically today later at 8 p.m and wrapping it up in abu dhabi in march 18th we have a two-week break um in october for the real life mexican grand prix and united states grand prix then again a two-week break uh, for christmas and new year and later in the season between round 15 in malaysia and round 16 in Japan in February for a little break week uh, to allow our drivers to rest but uh, that is pretty much how the calendar is shaping up and now it's time to look at the drivers lineups and starting with Mercedes we have a rather interesting lineup with uh, Alex and Jay Thorne obviously both drivers raced last season uh, in the PS4 F1 tier, third place overall for Alex, fifth place for Jay Thorne. Quite an interesting lineup, maybe capable of fighting for titles, but what are we expecting from them, Jake? Yeah, these two are, are very quick on this game, and this is one of the teams that we expect we are expecting to be up there, titling, uh, challenging for the title, which is. It's really, it's really important for them, and I imagine one of them, uh, or both of them even, will be uh, challenging for that uh, drivers' championship because they are a very good pair. They are probably one of the best pairings on the grid. So uh, this is a team that everyone has to watch out for because uh, Alex has great pace, uh, as not not as much as in the rain. Vaughn's quite uh, good. Thorn is really good in qualifying. He can nail lapping. So it's, yeah, it's one of the best pairings on the grid and uh, I think everyone on, on the grid has to watch out for these two. Yeah, indeed. And um, next up is Red Bull uh, with Wooly51, a rather known name by now uh, in the OLPS4 community. And Oli yeah. D631, who was actually GP2 champion uh, last season. And they're teaming up in the Red Bull. Oli with um, a rather consistent uh, season. I mean, it, he improved a lot at the end of the season, getting his first win uh, on the last round in Brazil. Uh, finished eighth overall in the F1 tier. Oli, as said, was champion of GPT. So probably strong uh, lineup for Red Bull as well. Maybe not win straight away, but definitely contenders for podiums, would you say? Yeah, I would say Willie being a very, uh, a very, uh, is an AOR veteran, and uh, you know is very prominent on the PS3 days. He, he could be a surprise uh, being on the podiums. You know, he finished really well in uh, season 13. Ollie being the GP2 champion and recently being in the esports, he's definitely proved he has the pace in the race. You know, to get the result. So uh, it's it, Red Bull are a team that we. Uh, Need, it's another team we can watch out for, especially in the midfield area. They will be occasionally going for the podiums. Um, so yeah, Red Bull, uh, a very strong lineup uh, this season. Yeah, and next up is personally probably the strongest lineups on the grid with uh, Scuderia Ferrari, obviously F1 uh, champion last season with Red Bull, RSC191, one, one one, and runner up, Ali Kidd in the second Ferrari I mean it, it just doesn't really get much better than this does it yeah, I mean the you get the, f the top two of F1 
of the F1 tier last season and put them together in a team, the objective is yeah. probably rather simple. It's just win the titles. Yeah, it's a very controversial uh, pairing. You know, last season it was very intense between them two, being on different teams. Now they're teammates. You know, they're going to work together in some way as well. So, you know, this is another team like Thorne and Alex in the Mercedes. This is another team we have to watch out for. And uh could be a, a Hamilton-Rosberg relationship. You know, Ali, um, but Ali and Doresi, both really good in qualifying. The, the be best qualifying... Uh, positions every well, nearly every week so in season 13 so these two you know it, this is a, this is an inter-team battle we have to watch out for Ali may have the uh, pace currently uh, on this game from what it seems but I know Oresi he can pull it out the back whenever he wants so yeah this is a a, a good inter-team battle we have to watch out for and uh, it's definitely going to get definitely intense between these two uh, during the course of the season yeah it will be very interesting to watch indeed and uh, following Ferrari it is for Cindy with uh, Game of the Best and Beast has I would guess that's how you pronounce it yes. uh, Game of the Beast uh, was promoted la midway through the last season from GP2 to the F1 tier managing to score 16 points in the last 6 races in the F1 tier probably Another point scoring uh, driver, mm. maybe capable of getting one or two podiums throughout the season. While Beast has, we don't really have much information to go on. Uh, no. and, uh, it's another rookie, basically. Yeah, he was in F4 uh, in season 13. Oh. Didn't really, we didn't really know what he was about, but this, this is a massive jump for him. He used to be on assist, now he's not. It's a big transformation for him. Uh, so he's it's definitely some one of the drivers we don't know where he's going to be in the race. Gamer can expect him to be trying to score points every week. Definitely has the capabilities to do it, even maybe a podium. Um, but yeah, uh, almost like a force force India in real life, you know. Could be definitely a a good a solid midfield team these two, and uh, they'll definitely want to be working together uh, to score some good points over the season. Yeah. And uh, next up, it is Williams uh, with a rather curious lineup. Uh, it mm. must be said with Clarky 110 and Big C 019. Big C obviously who had a massive uh, participation in the F1 esports uh, yes. series, winning the first round in China and a rather solid um, participation last season finishing 10th overall with Clarky finishing 7th and they're teaming up in Williams probably another podium contenders would we say yeah Williams uh Clarky another solid driver he 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 was challenging for podiums last season got at least one uh, and two sorry uh, which is really good for him and Big C obviously winning the esports uh one of the esports races definitely has the pace and he he he, he can definitely see uh, the outcome of the race he, he, he can visualize what's going to happen so these two another strong pairing you know Williams uh, it's, it's a good it's a good pairing and they'll definitely be challenging the Force Indias uh, this season especially Red Bulls uh, uh, in the midfield I reckon yeah and um, following uh, Williams it is McLaren Honda and uh, they have B Colt 93 and H Racing Green uh, as the drivers. B Colt, another one uh, that was promoted from GP2 to the F1 tier last season, uh, managed to get 36 points uh, in the last six races and a podium uh, in United States. As H Racing Green didn't have as success as of a successful uh, season uh, with a few DNFs and a few bad races in his name but a solid participation in the F1 esports could mean uh, a rather good season for McLaren Honda so it will be very interesting to see if they can challenge for podiums like Williams and for Cyndia yeah yeah I'd agree McLaren would be up there in that midfield Hatrice and Green definitely showed the pace in 
it, the esports. He he's, he's another driver to watch out for. Biko haven't seen much of him. I've known he has wheel issues at the moment. I'm sure that will get sorted out uh, for the race. Uh, Biko did manage to get a solid uh, second place at USA last season, uh, which is really good, and for and a fourth place as well. So last season coming in halfway through was uh, definitely good for him, and he definitely showed the pace he has. Um, and obviously, yep. Hatrison Green, he also it wasn't probably his one of his best seasons, uh, being the season 12 G GPT champion. Um, he, he's definitely got more to show uh, on this game and in season 14 as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, next up is Toro Rosso with a rather familiar face on this one. Uh, we have <laughs> RC Alonso and Jake, so yourself. Uh, in this team, um, neither of you, I believe, were on the F1 or GP2 tier, so it's going to be quite a new experience. So, yeah. how would you say uh, Toro Rosso is shipping up for this season? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and go into the season and do as best as I can, and score as many points as I can. Um, I'm not really sure about. Alonso, I haven't seen much of him. Uh, he was in season 13 GP2, and he did have some great pace uh, from from what I, what I saw. So he definitely could be a really good uh, good teammate to have. Um, but it's quite in the dark now for me and Alonso and the Toro. So I'm not sure where, where we're going to end up. We're just going to try our hardest and do the best we can. Yeah. And um, following that, we have, I mean, I know I said very well, I talked very uh, highly of Ferrari, but Haas is probably the team that excites me the most with uh, Nervo Tank and David Greco. Now, yeah. Nervo Tank is a previous AOR champion. David Greco, well, we, we all know who he is. So I would say we have a team with potential to win titles definitely and challenge yeah. Ferrari. Yeah, Ferrari, Mercedes and the Haas team. The Haas it, it's such a strong lineup from what David Greco's pace looks like in the uh evaluation races, you know, he was battling with uh the Ferraris and it's just he's he's an, he's a he's a rookie in AOR, hasn't really league race uh out on this game or even on the last game. So it's a whole new experience for him. I'm sure he'll jump, uh, in jump straight in, and he'll do his, he'll do really well. And uh, having Nervo, uh, a, a former AOR champion in the team as well, it, it it's probably one of the uh, perfect lineups. So, yeah, definitely another team to watch out for for the constructors' title or even the drivers' title, uh, for both of them as well. Definitely contenders there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, Renault doesn't seem to be too bad in too bad of a shape either with Jamie 995 and Shelley Jamie obviously finished uh, fourth last time out uh, in season 13 in the F1 tier getting grabbing a win in Germany and Shelley finishing sixth overall with two podiums in Austria and Italy um, a very well, I mean, it's a strong lineup from what we've seen. Probably not the strongest, but uh, I think we should definitely keep an eye on them because they're yeah. definitely strong drivers to fight up there. So maybe one or two wins on the cards for them this season. Yeah, Jamie and Shelley, is, they, they, they know each other well. It's a definitely a good pairing for them. Probably going to be challenging for maybe the third or the fourth bestest team behind Mercedes, Haas and Ferrari uh, on paper. Uh, Jamie, you know, one of the only, one of the last pad users uh, in this tier, definitely has the pace, he showed it on the last game, and yeah, he's one to watch out for this season, he's he's very good in quality uh, as well. Shelley, the, probably one of the best rookies uh, to enter the PS4 league, you know, came straight into F1 last season, made a great transition, he's now on the wheel from the pad. And he, sh he showed the pace in the evaluation races uh, as well, and even the esports races that he's taken part in. So, to uh, another strong pairing, the Renault team, and uh, definitely one to be battling in the midfield. 
Yeah, absolutely. And to round up the driver lineups, we end up with Salva, with Sh Big Shot Play, GR, and Synthetic. And that's a lineup that it's it's quite curious because Synthetic, I've never really heard of him before. No. And no. Big Shot is a known uh, name in yeah. LR, but it, I mean, it hasn't been up there as much as probably could be so it will be a very interesting lineup to, to watch throughout the season because we, I'm not sure really what to expect of them Yeah, Salva, another team not sure what's going to happen with the big shot he is the, an AOR veteran he, he's very experienced he's known as a street circuit specialist he's going to try and score big points uh, this season he want, he'll want to improve from season 12 and season 13 uh, where he would have wanted to do better. Synthetic, not sure. I know he had very impressive TT times or time trial and his uh, evaluation was pretty good. Um, not sure what he's going to be like this season. He's, he's probably the only driver on the grid that we don't really know much of and we can't really say much of. Uh, but he, yeah, he's a, a rookie into F1 and uh, he'll be hoping to to do well this season score some points yeah but uh, nevertheless that rounds up a very strong uh, grid uh, nevertheless in the PS4 probably some have been claiming that this is the strongest grid PS4 has ever seen and uh, that will probably be true but uh, it, it is yet to be seen obviously later today when the when the season finally kicks off at Australia at 8 p.m. and mentioning Australia it's time for us then to preview a little bit of what may happen in the season opener obviously Albert Park with a very different nature to most of the other tracks is a street track um, a modest speed racing track as well and with the possibility of rain uh, affecting qualifying and race I mean we're looking forward to it because we obviously we have a lot of strong drivers racing and the weather could be could throw a span in the works and there's so much that can happen at the season opener yeah it's an, it's, Australia is an interesting one um, we, people are going to come into this race and they gotta, they, they got to rely on the strategy because it's a it's a very difficult track to overtake on so uh, going into qualifying as well that's going to be very important whoever's on pole um, Undercut looks very strong uh, as well and I can imagine the top teams will be looking at the strategy and thinking what can I do uh, to get in front at, uh, during the race uh, it's going to be very close but whether there's gonna, we're going to see any overtaking options uh, definitely into turn one could be an overtaking uh, opportunity. Uh, turn three as well. Uh, sector one, uh, pretty much a very good overtaking opportunity. But not, not we've not seen uh, any league race around Australia, so we don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, it will when we get to it. It will be a good race. Yeah, I mean, and if we get some kind of rain, it it will be amazing yeah, to see. Throw a, a spanner in the works. <laughs> It'll definitely test the drivers yeah, and we'll see who 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 has the pace, who has the raw talent uh, in both conditions. I mean, Aressi, from in the, who's in the Ferrari this season, definitely showed that uh, Alex in the Mercedes wasn't so great in the rain. Uh, so he, he, he'll be hoping to improve on his uh, wet, race, uh, wet race pace. And uh, yeah, them two, and including, you know, their teammates as well. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good battle between uh, the Mercedes, the Ferraris, and the Haas, uh, possibly the Renaults as well. Uh, we'll see yeah, when we absolutely. get to the race. And um, don't forget to tweet us uh, your predictions and opinions for the Australian Grand Prix. The Twitter handle will be in the description and on the screen right now. But um, yeah, I mean, it will be rather interesting. But now it's the tricky part. So, who do you think? are the most likely drivers to be on the podium tonight mm, it's an interesting one because I think it's it may be down to whoever qualifies on pole will 
will get will will win the race most likely unless there's some controversial uh, like turn one or you know someone gets a bad start. I know with Resi and Ali, Alex, them them three will definitely be looking to get on pole for the race and try and hold that position. Uh, we could see some surprises uh, in the race as well. Um, Big C maybe, you know, he is a uh, some good pace. Shelley and Jamie the Renaults. Uh, it's going to be very tight, especially in the midfield, but in the front, you know, we're going to be looking at Alex, Ali, and Aresi, uh, and Thorn as well. Uh, the Mercedes and the Ferraris. Let's not forget the Greco and Nervo Tank in the house. You know, it's going to be the top of those top six drivers, you know, probably all looking to win the drivers' championships and uh, with their teammates, with the constructors. So. It's going to be an interesting battle between those three teams. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll have a surprise from someone else. I mean, it, it's very hard to predict uh, what yeah. may happen, especially as a season opener with so many good drivers and so something so much different from the last seasons. But, uh, well, I mean, if I had to, let's let's pretend... That I know a lot of what's going on, so I, I mean, for a podium, as you said, it will be very interesting to see who gets it. But uh, I would go with Aresi, Nervo Tank, and Big C. How about that? Wow! There we go. <laughs> Yeah, why I, not? Why not? I, from my predictions, I, from what I could see on paper, um, I, I'm gonna go with. I think Ali is gonna take the win in Australia. He came second last season to Nervo Tank in season thirteen, and these being different cars, you know, not much we can say. But I think Ali's gonna take the win, uh, followed by Greco, because uh, <laughs> Greco. Mm -hmm. His pace is uh, pretty good uh, in, in the race. And uh, in third, I'm going to go with uh, Alex as well. So, I think Interesting. This is a strong, it's a strong podium. <laughs> Thor, I'm, I think Thorne and uh, Nervo and uh, Aresi may just miss out on those podium spots, but we'll, we'll see when we get to the race. Yeah, and um, you can follow all that action later tonight at 8pm uh, live stream will be on PS Luton Rules channel. Link will be in the description and on your screen as well. So don't make sure you don't miss that out uh, because it will certainly be uh, a great season opener for season 14 of AOR. AOR is finally back and we are very hyped for it. But um, that is pretty much all we have for you today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, the return of the World Talk Show and if you're hyped for Season 14, let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to tweet us um, of your predictions and opinions for uh, this season. But uh, that is all from me today. Uh, Jake, if you want to add something. Oh yeah, just, just can't wait for the race. Um... I was also talking about strategy. It does look like it will be a one stop, uh, ultra soft, super soft, or other way around. Though, if you're going to pit earlier, you might go the, the soft tyre as well. So, some strategy options there. I don't think we'll see any two stops because I believe that is slower uh, than the one stop. Uh, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the race and uh, can't wait to get out there racing. And yeah, AWAR is back and the talk show is back. Yep. And. Um with that, we conclude the first episode. Don't forget to check out the race later today at 8pm. But that is all from me and from Jake. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.